raise people from the dead and all kind of stuff like that. Then it comes down to the hard part where he's going to be betrayed and crucified. Now that's the way your Christian life is, young people. Listen, when you first start out, it's just wonderful. Woo! Everything's great. God answers prayer. The Lord blesses. But then this, you see miracles. You see things happen. Then there comes that hard time. Comes that hard time. And every Christian's going through a hard time. Nobody that God ever used was used by God until God first proved them and let them go through a hard time. God, if you want God to use you, you just might as well expect, you might as well expect a difficult time to come in your life. And they say, I don't know this for a fact, they say that the severity of your trouble will match the amount that God blesses you and uses you. If you have a little trouble, you get a little blessing. If you have big trouble, you get big blessings. I don't know if that's all exactly true, but I wouldn't doubt it. Mark chapter 11, verse 1. Mark chapter 11 and verse 1. We'll begin reading with verse 1 tonight. Everybody look at it. And when they had came nigh unto Jerusalem, unto Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door without, in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. Now the, the thing that really jumped out at me was right there at the bottom of verse 4, where it just happened, just for no reason at all, the Holy Spirit put in the scripture that they had that colt tied at a place where two ways met. Like, a, like an intersection, crossroad. Isn't that strange that the Lord had put that there? In the very Word of God. Have you ever noticed how that the Lord puts little, seem like insignificant things in the Bible? And you think, well, I wonder what, why did he make a reference to that? Well, the Lord said there that they went and found the colt, just like he told them. And they found that colt where two ways met. Like Interstate 40 crossing Highway 70. Then I believe tonight that represents a point in them fellows' life. I want to preach to you for just a few minutes, not long, on the Christian's crossroad. The Christian's crossroad. Now, uh, here it goes. Now, the Lord had done all these miracles. They could either follow him all the way now, or else they had their chance to bail out. They knew that public opinion was turning against the Lord, like, like we're seeing it here in America, like what I just read to you a while ago. They knew the heat was getting on. They knew it was getting harder and harder to stand for what was right. And the Lord said, all right, fellas, now you go down here at such and such and go right over here and you're going to find a little pony, a little colt tied, and you loose him and bring him to me. The Bible said they went over there. I don't know how far it was. They went over here. Sure enough, right where he told them, there's that little colt tied. And they seen one road went one way and one went the other way. And no doubt the devil jumped on their shoulders and said, all right, boys, if I was you, I'd get out now while the getting's good. You've had your big times. You've seen the miracles. You've had, you've had shouting times. You've enjoyed the Lord. Now they're going to kill him, and they'll probably kill you too. If I was you, I'd just head down that way. Right. They had a choice to make. Was they going to take that coat and go back to the, the Lord or just hightail it down the interstate somewhere? They come to a crossroad. Now you, my friend, will come to a crossroad in your life. You're going to come to a point in your life where the devil offers you a chance to go the other way. You're going to come to a point in your life where the devil says, all right, now's your chance. Bail out. Ain't you about sick of this church business? Bible, Bible, God, God, do this, do that. You're going to come to a point in your life where you're at a crossroads and you're going to make a decision. Am I going with God or am I going the other way, down the way of the world? 
I remember people standing up when I first got saved. I was so on fire, I didn't know how to act. I, God had been so good to me. First year I saved, my feet never touched the ground, I don't think. And I remember people standing up in church and they'd say, y'all pray for me, I'm discouraged, I'm just about to give up. And I remember sitting there thinking, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard in my life. Why would anybody want to get this up? Man, this is great. We're going to heaven. Hallelujah. Woo! I can't wait to get back to church. And that idiot is standing there saying they want to give up. What are they to give up? What are they to go back to? What's the big deal here? I haven't been saved very long. My time come. My time come whenever demon in MacDowell County seemingly is on my back. My time come when my friends turned against me, some of them. My time come when I got so low I had to look up to see the bottom. My time come when I went, Phew. I don't know about this. And the devil says, there's a way out. Why don't you go the other way? There will come a time, young people, when it's not like it used to be. Young people need to get this. All you young people, listen to me for a second. When you get up at camp, you really get on fire for God at camp. Listen now. Y'all listen? You get on fire for the Lord at camp. Boy, you get out there and everybody gets to shouting. Everybody gets to hollering. Everybody starts crying. God moves in. Young people really like that. They just say, this is great. Glory to God. I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to stand for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! This is wonderful. Boy, I just can't wait to get out of here and live for the Lord. I'm going to tell all my friends. I'm going to call mom and daddy. And they do it. And they mean it. They mean it. But as time goes on, the summer drags on, then the school starts, and then everybody starts talking about the dance this Friday night, and everybody starts doing that. Then, and then you come to church, and you have a few dead services, and you get mad at somebody at church, and then somebody puts the pressure here, somebody puts the pressure there, and the devil says, why don't you just go the other way? Why don't you just take the easy way out of this thing and not... That, hey, when the weather gets warm like it is now and, and uh, the, 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 the world is tempting and everything's out there and you just say, nope, it's Sunday night. I'm going on to church. I'm getting in the choir. I'm doing what's right. You are at a crossroads in your life and you will make a decision that will affect the rest of your life. Somebody just told me last night, they mentioned one of our church members from years ago that's backslid and how disappointed they were in them. And I know the boy they were talking about, and that young man, he used, to, he used to sit around up here and shout the victory. But he come to a crossroad in his life and went the wrong way. Went the wrong way. One of the boys come to me one time, a young man that I'd led to the Lord. He come up to me one time up there in my office or somewhere up there in the other building and said, Brother Danny, I just don't know what's wrong with me. I said, why? And he said, I'm just, I don't know. It just ain't like it used to be. I said, what do you mean it ain't like it used to be? He said, I used to just love to read my Bible and pray and visit and give out tracts. And everything. He said, I just, I just ain't, I don't like it no more. I just, I'm, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm tired of the Lord. I'm just, and just don't. Something just ain't there like it used to be. It's just not there. I don't. Truth is, if the truth was known tonight, there's probably 40 people sitting in here tonight that you're here tonight, but deep down inside you know good and well that something's missing in your heart. It's not there like it ought to be. You're not on fire for God like you once was, and, and you're just dragging through, just dragging through, barely making it. You know what I told him? I said, you're just at the crossroads. Just hang on. Hang in there. It'll smooth back out. Buddy, I've went through times when I didn't want to... You say, Brother Danny, what do you do when you don't want to read your Bible? I read it not wanting to. You know why? Because I've learned that if you go ahead and do what you're supposed to do, it won't be long till God comes back on the scene, God blesses you again, the glory comes back, and then you start wanting to again. You're, the dumbest thing you can ever do in your Christian life is just do what you want to do and not do what you don't want to do. You're a spoiled brat and you're an immature Christian if all you do is what you want to do. I know a lot of guys, that they, they'll go preach on the street if they want to go preach on the street. They'll knock on the door if they want to knock on the door. They'll give out a track if they want to give out. They'll come to the choir if they want, but if they kind of got the yucks and kind of got the blows, I just don't believe it. Right 
there, you're making a decision that will stunt your spiritual growth if you don't go ahead and do what you're supposed to do. Do you think I always feel like preaching? Of course I don't. I've preached. I've been on my telephone in my office over there in a big time argument with a wicked individual giving me down the road while our choir was out singing, brother. And all got out here and opened my Bible up and just hauled off and preached. And you just thought I was right with God the whole time. And I was trying to be. I wasn't where I wanted to be. I, I thought, God, I'm a big hypocrite. God, I don't even have no preach inside of me. But that book said preach in season, out of season, when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, and, and when you come to a crossroad, don't even think about going down the other way. Go back to Jesus. Go back to the altar. Go back to God. Get on your knees. Don't go the other way. We're at the most dangerous part of the year right now, summertime. Every year, every year at summertime, somebody backslides. Every year, somebody like, well, Brother Danny just always got the victory and he just preaches every Sunday. Listen, brother, I got the victory in Jesus. Lord, my sins are forgiven. But sometimes in my flesh, brother, I don't feel like preaching. I don't want, I thank God, there's no way in the world I can preach. But if I go ahead and do what I'm supposed to do, somewhere or another, God still blesses it and, and honors it. He wants us to just stay with him. Like Kadesh Barnea. Are you familiar with Kadesh Barnea? It's Numbers chapter 13, all the way through the Bible there. Genesis, Exodus. Here's what happened. They come out of Egypt, right? Moses led them out of Israel's bondage, Egypt's bondage. They come out there. It was only like 14 days from Egypt to Canaan. Two weeks they could have made it into the promised land. And brother, they, they, uh, uh, they, they could have walked right in there, had the glory, had the victory, had everything they want, and they could have had the victory. Do you know what they've done? They got to the edge of the promised land and sent spies over there instead of just taking it like God said. And the spies come back and says, we can't do it. Them people's giants, they'll kill us. We can never handle that mess over there. And they got scared. And they spent 40 days over there fooling around out of God's will. And the Lord looked down and said, All right, you spent 40 days wandering around over in the wilderness. He said, You're going to wander for one year for every day you wasted. And they walked around 40 years before they went to Canaan on a two-week journey. And I know people, I know people here tonight, you're in the same shape. You're just as saved as anybody. Your name's in the book of life. You have eternal life. You've got Jesus Christ in your heart, but you came to a crossroad in your life. You was afraid to go on with God. You held back because of something you want to hold on to, and you are wandering in the wilderness right now. And I know Christians in McDowell County, and you do too, that are going to wander for 40 years in the wilderness and never get plugged in and get the victory. Oh, they come to church every Sunday. They come to church. Like a lot of you do. You come here every Sunday, but you just sit. You're saved and you know it. You even get a blessing. You like hear the preaching. You enjoy the singing. But there's something inside of you. You went the wrong way about three or four years ago. And you never have had the victory like God wanted you out. You know what? You come to the crossroad and went the wrong way. Three things right quick before I close that I want to give you. You come to the crossroads in. You come to the crossroads of temptation. People, when they first get saved, I don't know about you, but when I first got saved, I don't even... Man, I don't remember sinning for ages. I mean, I probably did, but I don't remember. Do you, was you like that? I didn't even, it didn't even bother me. I, mean, I, I never even thought about sinning. Did you? You know, when you first get saved, it's like the Lord just picks you up and carries you. Nothing but People say, hey, let's go. Well, you're stupid, man. That's awful. Let's serve Jesus. Let's serve the Lord. Well, I promise you the time will come. When you're at a crossroads of temptation, you're going to want to do something bad real bad and you're going to want to and that's when the devil jump on your back and say you probably ain't even saved or you wouldn't even want to do something like this it's easy to yield and hard to say no a lot of Christians are like that little boy his mama kept taking him fascinated for going swimming on the way home and she said now son he, don't go swimming in that creek no more on your way home. He said, but mom, I just can't resist temptation. And she said, all right, you resist it from now on. And he, the next day he said, you go swimming? He said, well, I took my bathing suit in case I was tempted. <laughs> That's 
where a lot of Christians are. Way back in the back of their mind, they know they're going to be tempted and they know they're going to give in. You know what I believe about temptation? I believe when you feel the devil tempting you and you feel the world tempting you, there's probably somebody in here that's really being tempted. You're being tempted at work. You're being tempted to do something you shouldn't do. You're being tempted by somebody that you're not married to or you're being tempted to cheat your company or steal money or do something wrong. You know what my advice to you is? You've got to realize that you're no match for the devil in your own strength, that you're at a crossroads in your life, that this thing will make you or break you, that you're going to go home with God and get stronger, or you're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years and say, God, give me strength. Help me. I don't have the strength. Help me to make the right choice right here in my life. That's an important, terribly dangerous one old boy said, I can't keep my mouth from watering when I run by the watermelon patch. But I, he said, I can just run and not look. You know, when you're at the limit of your patience, that's when the devil's going to come with temptation. Jesus fasted 40 days, right? He was after it a hunger. Then come the devil. The devil will come when you're down and discouraged and you ain't got your bills paid and you just have a fuss with your husband or your wife or your mama, and then the devil will say, why don't you just blah, 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 and put something in your head. That's a crossroad. That's a crossroad of temptation. Young people, young people, listen to me. Oh, I know it's exciting at youth rally. We had the most exciting youth rally, I believe, this time we've ever, ever had. I believe that. Uh, we're still getting reports. I don't know how many. Listen, I found out there's a boy in South Carolina got called to preach that night. We didn't even know nothing about. And another one uh, just recently confirmed his call to preach. I don't know. There's no telling what God did here at the youth rally. And all the young people just glory to God. Woo! It's exciting, man. This is great. Young people from all over the United States. Come to New Manor. They're our friends. We go out and eat pizza. We shout. We have a good time. It's easy when all that's going on. And then hot weather comes. And a bunch of them wants to go to the beach for the week at senior trip. I want to say this. You parents need to have your head looked at if you'd let a kid take off the beach with a bunch of kids like that. Yeah, I, can I recommend a good psychiatrist for you mom and daddies? I ain't blaming the kids. It's stupid parents that would allow their kids to take off with a bunch of maniacs to Myrtle Beach. You say, Brother Danny, I've done told mine can go. Tell them you made a mistake and don't let them go. Not with a bunch of kids that ain't even saved. Bad enough to taking them and being decent with parents and making them do decent. He said, well, don't you trust your daughter? Not with a bunch of heathen, I don't. I don't trust her or the heathen. I, know I had no idea I was going to say that, so you can just take it. And I love you. That's a crossroad. That's a crossroad. It's a crossroad. Temptation. Number two, the crossroads of trouble. It's easy to serve God when everything's going good. But oh boy, when you have trouble come. When you have trouble. Phone calls. Family trouble. Financial trouble. Your friends turn against you. I want to tell you something tonight, brother. It's not always a breeze to serve God. Sometimes, son. Oh, my soul. There's been a lot of times people tell me this. Say, Brother Danny, how did you stand to go through this? How did you stand? You know how I tell, what I tell them? I say, just try to stay right with the Lord. Think of all the good things God's done for you. And just don't let yourself think about all that bad stuff. But you'll, you'll be in awful shape ever was if you sit around and think about all your problems and your troubles and your burden. But I've known some people that's really had some. When you come home, somebody told me the other day, not, not in our church, somebody told me the other day, so I come home from work, found a note. My wife took everything she had, clothes and everything left. No warning. She didn't tell me. I had no idea anything was wrong. Now, buddy, when that happens to you, like it did this gentleman, you're at the crossroads. And you know what I told him? I said, when that happens to a man or a woman, you're going to turn to something. You're going to turn to something. Everybody turns to something. 
You don't go through something like that by yourself. You got to lean on something. You'll get drunk or you'll go out and find somebody yourself or you'll turn to the Lord. And you're going to make a big mistake if you get drunk or go out and do the same thing they did just to pay them back. That's a crossroads. That's a crossroads. They took that coat, went back to Jesus. They said, well, it might mean our lives, but we've come this far. We're going the rest of the way. There's grace that's brought us safe this far. It's grace that'll take us home. The Lord looked at them one day and said, you going back? They said, no, Lord. They ain't nowhere to go. You've got the words of eternal life. They ain't nothing this old world to go back to. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Sometimes the Christian life is a fight, brother. You got to... <laughs> have you ever had a dream you was fighting like that? Yeah. Buddy, I have. I dream, I dream. One time I dreamed I was following the Lord, and the Lord was down here on earth. And it was during the tribulation. And I don't know why I was here during the tribulation, but I, I thought we all had to go through the tribulation. And, I, and it was like Jesus was about 20 foot ahead of me. And I was watching him, and I was saying, there, Lord, and I was having to climb up, Lord, wait on me, Lord, Lord, wait on me, Lord. And I was, and I was tripping and falling, and Joyce got in my way, and, and I was trying to follow the Lord and couldn't keep up with him. And there was weeds, and I was going over little creeks and stuff, and he was getting away, and I said, Lord, wait, Lord. And, he was, and he was, I was losing sight of him. And I woke up, boy, it was just an awfulest feeling. But sometimes that's the way you feel, like you're trying to serve God, trying, but he's getting away from you. You ever felt like that? Like, Lord, wait, wait, wait on me. It's like that man that he dreamed he was in Vietnam, and he dreamed he was... <laughs> he's going through weeds and stuff and he's fighting and he'd pull out a hand grenade and throw it and go boo and he'd just throw, pull out another hand grenade and throw it and went boo and boy all of a sudden he heard screaming and he woke up and his wife's going ah she didn't have no curlers left in her hair <laughs> that's what it was like but you know what you just felt like you just fighting, just fighting, just going through weeds, going through. I mean, like that. Sometimes that's the way Christian life is. And then, bless your heart, you'll wake up one morning and the sky is clear and the sun's shining and a little song playing down inside. It says, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy. And, and hallelujah, you caught up with him. Hallelujah, he's back again. Hallelujah. See, if you'll just stay faithful during your trouble, the good times will come back. Where young people mess up is they get on fire for the Lord and they think it's always going to be like that. And then when they face trouble or temptation or trial, they think, ugh, I must not even be saved. And then they go back. Or two ways, man. Number three, lastly, the crossroads of service. I don't believe you, you don't stay still in the Lord's service and you don't go backwards. You go forward. And I believe if you keep accepting what God lays on your heart, that you'll keep growing and getting closer to the Lord. It's like Brother Bruce mentioned about needing some Sunday school teachers. If you take a job being a Sunday school teacher, see, you, you like to take a step up. And you're getting in there more. You're getting more involved. You're getting doing something for the Lord. Some of you just getting in the choir. It's taking a step. Then the Lord, as you live right and serve God, the Lord seems like he just, you graduate on up to another step and do something else. Maybe sing a special. Maybe give a testimony. All right, and you keep going. But the very place where you stop growing is where the Lord gives you something to do or leads you to, and you just say, no, nope, I'm staying back. And there's people that's been saved for 20 years and going nowhere simply because they come to that crossroads of service and decided that they didn't want to obligate themselves and made up an excuse. You see, when you first got saved, you come to church no matter what. Now, I've heard people, I've met people, uh, I've told you before, I've met people that on Thursday told me, well, I'll be there Sunday, but my baby's sick. If my baby ain't sick, I'll be there. Now, how do you know your baby's going to be sick that long? Huh? I don't even... Hey, I believe if the baby is sick, if it's too sick to come to church, that mama ought to stay home and daddy come. And then Sunday night, daddy ought to stay home and mama come. 
Amen. And don't that make sense? Does that make sense to you? Why does it take two people to stay home with a sick baby? Mama holds the baby and daddy watches the ball game. Yeah. Amen? Hey, if the baby is sick, one of you comes Sunday night, one of you comes Sunday morning. Take turns. So, so you won't be all out, the whole family out of church. Take the other kids. See, you're at the crossroads. Just because you have babies don't mean you get to backslide, folks. God never gave you babies. Oh, let me just throw this in. Just because you get married don't mean you get to backslide. I worry, I worry about people who get married and do less for God after they're married than they do before they're married. I've known people that come to visitation, never missed a service, and everything they got married and they ain't worth a plug nickel for Jesus right now. Amen? I'm beginning to wonder if God's in such a marriage as that. Your marriage is supposed to make you closer to God, not farther away. Hey, there's one thing I made up my mind a long time ago. I said, if I get married, it ain't going to trim one thing that I do for Jesus. It'll give me more to do for the Lord, not less. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's right. You say, well, we need to spend time together. We'll serve the Lord together. Don't use that for an excuse to get out of God's will. This is where most Christians bomb out. You take the easy way out. Prayer. You're going to come to a crossroads in prayer. Are you going to pray or are you just going to mess around? Hardest thing in the Christian life, fasting. Second thing, praying. I got down to pray this evening. I tried to pray. The devil been seemed like just been on my case especially hard. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but just today, it's been an awful day for me, spiritually. Just been on my back all day long, and I got down and I tried to pray, and my mind... My mind just, man, sometimes I think I'm crazy. I, can, I say, dear Lord, my mind goes all the way around the world. I say, dear Lord. And it, I mean, it, it takes me 10 minutes to push it down to where I can concentrate. I say, dear God. And two minutes later, I'm thinking about something else. I mean, I'm supposed to be praying. Dear Lord, help. You know what? That's just the devil and the principalities and the powers of the air that tries to fight you from praying. It's a struggle, man. It's a struggle. My brain's like one of them little things you set on your whatnot shelf, and you, and you pick it up and shake it, and the little snow little things go all around, 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 around. It takes. That's where my head is. That's why I can't go to sleep at night. I cannot. Like Friday night, I, I went all day long. Friday, three o'clock in the morning, I was wide awake, just like this. I could not lay down and go to sleep. My wife, she's the very hot son. She can hit the sack, turn over, boom. She's out like a light. Old woman like her can do that. I reckon. I don't know what it is. And I'm like, all right, that's about all we have time for. We hope uh, this message has been a blessing to your heart. And I want you to just make up your mind that you're going to do right when those crossroads come to your life, that you're going to serve God and do the right thing. Now, don't forget to pray for us. We'll be in revival meeting this weekend at the Gospel View Baptist Church in Dobson, North Carolina, where Brother Jerry Sizemore is the pastor. And that'll be uh, this coming Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now, um, we'd love to invite you to be in these services and just ask the Lord that His will will be done and uh, He'd just bless it and uh, that God will get in it and do great things. I believe the Lord will bless if we'll trust Him and pray to Him. We've got to go for now. I just hope you have a good evening. Be sure and tune in tomorrow at the same time. And until then, this is Danny Castle saying, May the Lord bless you is my prayer. You've been listening to the Bread from Heaven broadcast with Pastor Danny Castle. His mailing address is Post Office Box 1286, Marion, North Carolina, 28752. Join us Monday through Friday afternoons at 6 for the Bread from Heaven broadcast with Pastor Danny Castle. Mention our call letters when you write. We are FM 88 WPAR. It's time now for the Jesus Say Center with Pastor Roy Stein. Number one. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Roy Stein. Example. And about win or lose by what we choose. We've had this message on earlier, but we received quite a bit of response for it. And uh, people talked about how it helped them, so I thought we'd put it on again. It's entitled, We Win.